Hey everyone, Battle Bear Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on naval realistic battles. Now, most people nowadays are wanting to go ahead and get into it because of the battle passes. It's been an interest of many people and it's been a very much an interest of mine that I've been enjoying more and more regularly on our live channel. Now, between the differences of arcade and realistic, many people will flock to arcade because of the fact you have easier turning and maneuverability, faster speeds on the torpedoes, and easier targeting of the guns. All of this comes at an expense though. The fact that you will get lower RP and silver line gains, no research points in silver line. Now, what I suggest is actually more and more people give a chance to naval realistic, especially when you're dealing with much larger ships here, such as destroyers and up for the Blue Water Fleet. But like I said, you will earn a higher research points in naval realistic battles. Things that will go ahead and make realistic battles different is that you'll find the agility has been diminished, torpedoes will not travel as fast, and the guns will not go ahead and auto range on their own. You will need to go through and relock your target and change, make any adjustments manually. However, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the different aspects of naval realistic that I can come up with, try and make it easier for you guys to be able to play it. So let's go ahead and get on into it, shall we? So one of the first things that you're going to want to go ahead and do is to figure out about your control scheme. One of the most important things when it comes to realistic is the lock target function. Right here I have mine set as the middle mouse button, but you can set it to whatever you find most comfortable. This will be used every single time you're locking onto an enemy ship out in the distance, or up close. When you lock on, two things will happen. First, your crew will go ahead and figure out, A, what the range is to the target. And then the second will be, they will figure out, B, what the um, sight distance control needs to be set to. Now, this is all great and dandy if you two are sitting at a standstill, you and your target, and you're just shooting at it. However, there is also a second thing that needs to come into effect, and we will talk a little bit more about this on this other page here. The second thing you need to deal with when it comes to your controls is the mouse wheel when it comes to distance correction. Now, typically it'll be set to the zoom axis of naval, but what I'll highly recommend is change it to distance correction and changing the percentage from 50% down to about 40, maybe 30%. What this percentage does is it goes ahead and allows you to control how much the range gets affected, either when you are increasing it or decreasing it to adjust for your shots. The next thing that you'll be needing to deal with will be the ranging shot. Typically, when it comes to me firing at my target, the most I deal with is just simply the firing itself, which fires the full volley of your guns, your primary cannons, or whichever one you have it selected. Now, the ranging shot, what it does is it goes ahead and allows you to fire off a single uh, turret. You have turret ranging shot, and you have it set. Whatever you have your button set to, it'll fire off one turret. If you fire it again, it'll fire off another turret while that first one is reloading and so forth until you have fired all of your turrets or that first one is reloaded and it goes back to fire from there. This is good if you end up in a situation where, let's say you are in a battle cruiser or a heavy cruiser or above, battle cruiser, heavy cruisers, and battleships, which have a much longer reload rate. What this allows you to do is to fire off one turret to figure out if you are leading the target or if you have the right range set for your target. Now, if you were to go ahead and fire a full volley, it wouldn't make too much of a difference. However, let's say you're in closer proximity to rocks and different islands. If you come around a corner and you're firing at a target in the distance, but hey, here all of a sudden is a new target right in front of you up close, you're gonna wish you had only used a turret ranging shot. These are the special circumstances. They aren't very often that you run into them, but it is good to have it just in case. But it's something that as you get more and more comfortable with the controls, you will want to go ahead and delve into as time progresses. Let's go ahead and move on to our next topic, though. All right, here for our next topic, we will go ahead and talk about angling and positioning. For the first thing, it'll be angling. When it comes to your ship, 
you'll have an orientation. Typically, you'll see that most of your turrets will either be in the front of the ship or in the back of the ship. Sometimes they'll be all in the front or all in the back, or they'll be evenly distrib distributed. With the Baltimore here, it's a vent vehicle, 5.7. A lot, it's a heavy cruiser that'll go ahead and have two turrets in the front and one in the back. Most people, they think, oh, well, let's, let's go ahead and square up, shoot a full broadside, because they've seen this in the movies. It's uh, obviously a good thing we should be doing. Well, the problem with it is that as you are doing a broadside onto the target, you will create the largest target for the enemy to shoot at as well. So you are, yes, getting the most out of your guns and turrets, but you are also taking potentially the most amount of damage. To mitigate this damage, what you want to do is angle your ship to the enemy. When it comes to dealing with stuff, you want to look at what your gun are actually being able to fire at. If it is situated here with the white, that means that your guns are A, loaded, and B, able to go ahead and fire at whatever you're looking at. If you end up with a situation where the turrets have a much grayer look, or the targeting circle has a gray look, that means, yeah, it is loaded, but is not able to fire on your target, either because it's at the wrong angle, it's blocked by a part of your ship, or whatever it might be. Now, this isn't always a bad thing to have one of your turrets unable to fire. If you are firing at a much deeper angle, or much shallower angle, you will only have this much of your ship for them to fire at. Now, why would you ask that? Why, why would you want to go ahead and do that? Why not get all three on there? People that shoot at your ship from range are more likely to go ahead and bounce or not penetrate at a much steeper angle. It's the same thing that happens within ground realistic, ground arcade, or ground sim. The tanks on the armor, when you angle it, sloped armor, it'll go ahead and have the most effectiveness. The same thing happens with ships, guys. Now, if your armor is very thin, it doesn't matter how much you angle it. If you hit it with something real big, it's probably going to go ahead and penetrate anyways. However, when you do have armor, when it comes to ships like this, being the Baltimore, you will see all that extra padding on the side there. What that allows is an extra bit of layer of protection for your ship when you're going ahead and angling it. An increased amount of protection. Now, if you are in a situation not being shot at, Absolutely, try and do the most amount of tur turrets on target. But only make it to where you have to get all three of them to on target. You do not want to go side on with the broadside. This angle here would be what you would be doing. This allows all three of your turrets to go ahead and start hitting the target, but you will only have to deal with that much of the ship being exposed. And because you are at an angle, less likely they're going to actually do a lot of damage to you. Some will hit, but it'll be minimalistic, while still maintaining all of your turrets. So, again, if you are in a combat and having to deal with something, try and go towards them at a slow speed. You don't have to be at a full speed, which we'll cover in a moment. Or go ahead and make sure that you are at an angle that does not allow them to penetrate you, which is possible. Okay? Let's go ahead and talk about the next topic, shall we? For this next section of the video, I'm going to be talking about three different things. Positioning, speed, and also the halt function of the ship. For the first thing of positioning, what you want to do when you're actually out there on the battlefield isn't necessarily just be, hey, I want to go full speed out in the middle of the open. Make sure you are close to objects to be able to use them to stop some of the enemy rounds from hitting you. You are in the open when you spawn in, which in some of the maps you will be, you want to try and rush to cover as quickly as possible so that way it can help protect you. To do this on some of the maps, you'll see some cliff faces, you'll see huge rocks, and you'll also see some smaller islands such as this, where it isn't very tall, it isn't very large, but it is able to go ahead and give some cover and protection from the enemy ships. Now, when you have targets off at long range, you will notice that you can shoot up and over the target, over the island. Let's go ahead and see if I can get this situated right here. You can see here, my guns are shooting up and over the island. 
Now, when something's out in the distance, when they fire back at you, unless they are actually realizing, hey, I need to either shoot closer or farther, which is harder to do when they don't see the target, but they are able to lock onto it, they may end up hitting, most likely will, the island in front of you. Now, what your advantage is also, is that you can peek out if you need to. So we have a ship there right on the other side. I can't really lock onto or do anything to him from the positioning. This is where it comes in also the second and third func or topics we will talk about, the speed and the halt. You will be able to go ahead and adjust if you want to go full speed ahead. One, you go from one third, two thirds, standard, full and flanking speeds forward. When it goes in reverse, you have one third, two thirds and full back. Now, when you're peeking around corners of this, what you want to do is actually keep it where you're usually about one third, maybe two thirds back, just to be able to get far enough back so that way your rear guns, you have a rear facing turret. Or in the Baltimore, where we had two in the front, we want to be poking out from the front, just enough to get your ship out so you can get the majority of your guns out to face the target. Once they've gotten out, like in this situation, we're able to go ahead and fire at the target. There we go. Now, as you can see, we're firing out. Technically, most of our ship is being covered by that island. Now, this isn't exactly the best type of example, but it does give you the general idea of how you need to do it in, in combat. Now, as I mentioned, the halt function is something that you do need to go in and make sure you realize what it's set as. By default, it is set at B. But I have it set at a Z. You can set it whatever you want to do it. What this does is if you are going at any speed other than stopped, say we go all the way up here to flank speed, it'll take us a little bit to get up to. I mean, it's a flight cruiser. It's not exactly heavy, but it's not exactly slow either. But it'll get us up to speed. Once we get up to speed here, what we do is we hit our halt button and it'll do the rest of the work going at to whatever it needs to do to make sure we get back to zero and as expeditiously a manner as it can. So it starts off by going full back and as it gets closer to zero, it'll actually move it down to two thirds back, one third back and until finally it's now that stopped. And what you will see is that it goes to a one or negative one kilometers an hour, depending on your momentum. But this will be very important when you're trying to stop yourself from going around a corner or when you're trying to stop yourself from being hit by some ally who isn't paying attention and going in front of you. You'll reach many different situations where that halt will actually come in handy. Even when you have enemy torpedoes coming at you, you might need to do an emergency halt and then turn into facing torpedoes. We might cover that in a future video. We'll see. Let's talk about our next topic, though. For this next part of the video, let's go ahead and talk about torpedoes and depth charges. First, we'll talk about the depth charges and how they go ahead and affect the enemy target and yourself. When you are setting up the, tar or the depth charges, you will have a 3 to 9 second timer that you will need to set prior to coming in. The shorter it is, the quicker it will go off. However, you also risk damaging yourself in the process. What you want to do is get up close to a target or the trajectory of the target, wherever they're going to be heading, and drop the depth charges in front of it, or next to it if you can. But right there, it ended up doing some splash damage. It wasn't too very, wasn't very close. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage. However, let's go ahead and come up a lot closer just to go ahead and destroy the target and show you how much they can actually do with just one depth charge if you do get close to an enemy ship. Now again, a reminder, you have it for a short fuse, you'll probably get them a lot easier, however you'll also be on a suicide mission to take yourself out too, unfortunately. Here we go ahead and get up on it, right next alongside of it, we're going to go ahead and drop it right there. We have ours on a 5 second timer and bam! One does a lot of damage to the smaller PT boats, speed boats being the torpedo boats or the gunboats. Okay? So if you can get in close, it's probably going to be a suicide mission if you have it at a three second or less timer. However, it will go ahead and more than likely guarantee a kill if you can pull it off. 
let's go ahead and move on to our next one, which will be tar targeting enemy ships. So when it comes to the torpedoes, you will go ahead and lock onto a target. If you have torpedoes, you will see this white line that's kind of popping up here very, very light on the video. So long as you go ahead and have your torpedoes not selected or the outline of where your torpedoes are going to launch to, it will not go ahead and do anything about how, where you need to aim ahead of it. You have to be up close. Your guide or how far you have to leave the target with your torpedoes will be based on your torpedo speed and your range. So in realistic here, they travel a lot slower. You will need to lead them a little bit better. Here we are able to lock onto the target. We are pulling up to it and we should be going ahead and seeing a lead indicator here shortly. Oh, it seems it's not letting us. There we go. There is the lead indicator. So you will see that's the lead it tells you, it recommends you actually fire a torpedo at. Because of how slow they are, if you're gonna fire it, let's say we fire our torpedo there. Now, it's turning, it may not actually hit that target. This is one of the things you have to be concerned about every single time you deal with ships. Ooh, yep, he ended up going just a little too fast. But you will line up your line, or your green line, and typically what you want to do is one in front and one in behind. Something like that, it's just a matter of being able to predict where your target is going to be. It takes practice. I still haven't gotten it perfected myself. But for the challenges, I know there is a torpedo kill on here. Future updates it may change. However, this is just a guide of how to technically do it and how to perfect it. We'll probably have something in the future with that. So stay tuned for that. Let's move on to our next topic, though, shall we? Our next topic here we're going to cover is artillery, anti-air artillery. So most ships will have anti-air guns or secondary gunners that will go ahead and be used to target either smaller ships, larger ships, or air coming out. Now, in an update that's coming up here soon, as of this video, there will be an, the inability to go ahead and fire on targets that the gunners cannot penetrate, such as destroyers, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, Battle cruisers or battleships. If your guns are unable to go ahead and penetrate it with their effective rounds, they will no longer fire when the update comes out. However, at this time of recording, they will still fire on anything that you set the target to. Now, there are a couple different ways of doing this. One will be for going ahead and selecting gun groups or tar specific primary and secondary targeting of your I will get into that in a moment, but first, let's talk about the ammunition that you use for anti-air. Typically, there is three rounds. The HE, the high explosive round, which is really your dumb fire round. As soon as it hits a target, it'll go ahead and detonate. It doesn't matter what type of target it is or anything. The second round that you will see in game, which is usually favored by Germans, is the high explosive timed fuse, TF. What this does is it still has a high explosive charge in it, but when you lock onto the target and fire, or your AI gunners do the same thing, you can fire with either secondaries or primaries if you let them be controlled by the gunner or by the AI gunners. What it will do is it'll detonate at the set fuse timer when it's locked on and fired. It doesn't matter if you actually hit it or not. Let's go ahead and show an example. Let's fire off this first round here just to get them out of the barrel. And we have a have an aircraft heading over us. Let's get it locked onto it. Come on. Excellent. So here we lock onto our target and we fire it off. It doesn't matter if it's close or not, whatever it was set at when the distance is, so it'll see it as 1400, 1500 meters. As soon as we fire, if we don't lead it enough, it won't actually do much damage other than a simple hit. Now let's change over to the variably timed. What this does is it goes ahead and has a proximity charge. On the ammunition itself, 
you will see there it says trigger radius. Now what that means is once it becomes, and that one's set at 23 meters, once it comes within that range of the target, or of any target, it will detonate. So this is really good when it comes to air targets. Used usually on, in the game, of the M247, a few other types of anti-air and rain itself and the ground forces. So we have our target. We don't even need to lock onto it after that first initial lock. We just simply fire up in its direction, and if it gets close to it, it'll actually detonate. Fire off one, another one, and get an example of it working. Too much of a lead. There we go. So as it gets closer, it'll go ahead and actually detonate right next to the target. See, there we go. Works as it is. I'm not actually doing any extra locking, no extra clicks. It's just simply firing the cannon itself with the ammunition loaded. That's all it has to be. If your AR gunners are doing it, they'll do the same exact thing, just firing off the round as quickly as they can in the direction with the variably timed. That is the one that you really want to use and it's favored by the US forces. Now, you will see it on other ones here within the British. We're able to give the examples of all three different types of ammunition. But what I would recommend, if you have the option, unless you're in a German vessel or something that specifically only has timed fuse, use your Verily timed. It will help you a lot more for anti-air. That is my recommendation at least. Let's go ahead and move on to the next portion, which is the targeting and toggling of our gunners. So down here on your bar, you will see where it says E, toggle gunner targets. This is for your secondary and your AA gunners. On this particular ship, all we have is primary and secondary weapon. So the AI gunners are currently in charge of the secondary gunners while, my, while I am actually controlling the primary guns. Let's go ahead and hit restart here. And what we will do is when we get the aircraft, we will turn it off. So it will start at first targeting ground and naval, or correction, naval and air targets. So anything on the sea and on the air. For AA, what you want to do is go ahead and find your target. Oh, I see it there. I'm going to go ahead and change my gunners to either target air forces or target air and and C targets. So bigger cannons will try to go ahead and shoot at the ships that are closest to you. Now you still have your air target above you, but what they'll do is pro target priority. It doesn't believe it's a threat because it's moving farther away. It's gonna try and go for those C ones. Now if you have a dive bomber, torpedo bomber, or even a high level bomber that you know is gonna be directly targeting you or one of your ships around you, change them over to anti-air. They will go ahead and search specifically for the anti-air targets. Where is he at? There it is. And they'll shoot it until either A, it's no longer within range, or the target is destroyed, whereas it, the pilot is actually dead. Not where it's simply on fire, breaking up. They'll actually shoot until the pilot is dead, because that plane can still technically drop its ordnance or fire its cannons until then. That's what they consider priority. Now, when it comes to the targeting, there's also another option. You go under your controls, you will see where it says manual targeting of primary caliber, of auxiliary caliber, and anti-aircraft caliber. Now, this here you will need to set up. I have set it up on my mouse again. But what it does is it allows you to tell your gunners to go for specific targets when they are enabled. Let's go ahead and re restart the match so that way we get the anti-air again. And we'll give targets to everybody before we actually allow them to do it. So for this particular ship, we only have primary and secondary gunners. So for our primary, let's say we want them, instead of them shooting at either the anti the aircraft or the smaller ships around us, we want it to shoot at the destroyer out there in the distance. So we click on our target, on the manual targeting of primary, and then we go ahead and turn our gunners back on. 
and have them take naval and air. They will, instead of hitting the closer targets to us, they will shoot at the target they've been designated to fire at. Doesn't matter what else is around them, what's going on. If they have, let's say, this target right here up close, this would be considered a priority target. They will fire at what you've set them at. Oh, I don't want them to shoot at that. I do have a change in target. I want them to shoot at this moving target. You change it over to it, they will change targets on their own. Now, if you go ahead and click it again and stop targeting it, they will consider whatever the priority is. So this one here is the closest target. That's what they will consider the priority target. They will change to it on their own, so long as you have them enabled. Let's go ahead and move on to our next topics.